Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Wally Weasel. And here we are with a brand new video for you. And a bit of a different video, sort of, kind of. Uh, it is a... Well, not really want to say like a hopeful or wish list or whatever kind of video, because I do want to keep my hopes and stuff, you know, level. I don't want to be all like, oh, this is going to be the best thing ever. But it may not, and then I get all upset. But no. Uh, so whatever... Whatever, however you want to describe it. Um, yeah, it's just basically going to be a nice little way of how settlements uh, should be built. I know should, even after saying all that, is a pretty powerful word. But it's just, uh, you know, for simplicity's sake, that I'm just going to be using that word and go from there. So, yeah, whenever I say should or anything associated with that, uh, it is still just, it is, yeah, for ease of explanation, you know? So... One of the most divisive things that we've seen in uh, Fallout, especially Fallout 4, is the implication of uh, the settlement building system. You know, where you have all these settlements all over the place and people either like them or they don't. You know, I myself, I really don't mind them and I understand they do tie in with uh, one of the major factions there, the Minutemen. But again, some people just... You know, don't like them because they do take away from other settlements that could have been made, uh, other locations that could have been explored upon, and it does kind of give a empty feeling to the wasteland. And, you know, given the news of more settlement type places, you know, like bases or ships or whatever, coming to Starfield, it's clear that Bethesda is not shying away from the uh, creation portion of uh, base building. So chances are very strongly that they're going to have be implemented in some sort of way within uh, Fallout 5. And hopefully this will be a way that, uh, you know, they can look at if anyone from Bethesda even watches this. You know, if they do, hello. Uh -huh. Thank you for finding my small channel or being recommended this video. That would be just as good. And hopefully they get some ideas from this. So for starters... I think the best method of doing this, and I know like this might be the more controversial part of this video for those especially who enjoy the base building concept and those who just don't like the game, uh, Fallout 76, yes, uh, with one base and perhaps little tiny, uh, you know, bases, camps, what have you, that you can dot around the place, but honestly, I'm not too uh, in love with the idea of little bases dotted around because yeah, you know um, that's just something I'd bring to the table in order to take away in the, you know, negotiations you know, like, eh, hey, we'll just take this part away and, yeah, and one to, uh, you know, placate those who just don't like too many and, yeah, you could say like, what about two or three but then, you know, Bethesda could just go crazy and then you suddenly have like 50 is that enough? Maybe just one more. Or two. Or three. Or ten. Ten! Yes, ten! Because we're really hungry! Right! Right! right. Or not really 50, but, you know, 10 or 15 settlements that could be built, and that just brings up the problem of that went through with Fallout 4 for a fair number of players. So we would limit that to just one, not to mention it would increase the size of the camp, increase what you could build into it, and I said camp, I meant settlement. Uh, yeah, build what you ever you want into the settlement and, you know, decorate it however you please. And it shouldn't be too much of a burden on your system, console, uh, you know, hard drive, whatever you happen to be playing Fallout 5 on. So this wouldn't be like, you know, one settlement in one location, obviously. Like with the Fallout 76 camp, it would be you can build wherever you want. Uh, with a few exceptions, you know, uh, exceptions being that you can't build within the boundaries of a set uh, location or interiors, you know, like interior cells, uh, mainly because especially with uh, enemies at certain areas, you really don't want random enemies attacking your camp or settlement or whatever, whoever you build over and over again because that would just get annoying. You get a little prompt that your settlement is under attack and then having to go back and realize that it's just like, you know, a couple of super mutants that are just spawned at their own little location and it's just because you built too close to them. So, 
you know, that makes sense. I mean, you know, you'd be all like, oh, well, what if we clear it and then build it? Well, maybe, maybe, but we're going to focus on uh, if you, that's if you couldn't, like for the Fallout 76 method. So, you know, we'll continue on with there. Uh, building would, wherever you are, would, uh, you know, quite matter because this is a early game, late game, post game idea of settlement building. So, you know, you don't are subject to the initial area right away at the start, you know, sort of like how Sanctuary Hills is there at the start to kind of give you a base to build upon. You can uh, build your base wherever you want. You can move it, obviously. Uh, the size of your base would depend upon, or the, you know, movement and resettlement of your base would depend upon the size of its initial list because, you know, you'd have to, because you would have to, you know, move it and stuff like that. Uh, this is just for realism's sake, you know, having to build up a whole caravan, perhaps even having to pay for the said caravan to uh, move your entire settlement to a new location. You know, kind of put something on uh, money. And money is something that we will discuss later on with uh, other ideas such as caravans and uh, the like. So just like with Fallout 76, it would be nice to have a resource uh, centers or resource uh, areas where you can you know, mine into the ground, take your resource, take your copper, or aluminum, uh, what have you, and be able to trade that with outside settlements as a means of acquiring certain amount of money, depending upon the settlements that you decide to trade with and the amount that you are willing to trade with them. You know, uh, you would have to, or you would probably pay more if you were traveling much further to an area that is not rich with said material or you get less for just basically traveling next door. Because obviously, I mean, like they could have just gotten it themselves, they're just paying for the convenience or just patting you on the head and saying, good job. So, yeah. So having that kind of stuff would be uh, nice. And for me, there would be two types of uh, settlement building with one type being, you know, kind of branched off into two areas. Obviously, you have the manual construction, which is as you would construct it in Fallout 76 or Fallout 4 without the Sim Settlements mod. Basically, build everything, set up everything, give everyone uh, locations to work. But, uh, yeah, so it would be very hands-on or uh, in a Sim Settlements type of way, build plots and, you know, settlers will roll these plots into whatever you have labeled them as, such as commercial plots or farming plots or residential plots or even defensive plots. And, you know, they'll be decorated individually, but you still, you know, map out the how the settlement is built and all that good stuff. And then there's the automatic automatic build, which would be just, you know, you set up your settlement and it slowly grows as you're you, as, ah, as you've gone away. There we go. Uh, you know, settlers will build it. And speaking of settlers, this is kind of a side thing here, but being able to actually name your settlers, you know, or just have them being generated a, with a random name, like as soon as they join your settlement, just boom, there you go, they got themselves a name. Because nothing, you know, could be more world breaking than if you happen to go out, do up a you know, series of quests where you have your settlement, and then you come back. And it's nice and built, you know, everything is perfect, all the happiness, the defense, the resources, all that stuff, 100%, and your settlers just haven't even told you their names, you know, so that, that's kind of, uh, you know, not really annoying, it's just kind of, as I said, world-breaking. So being able to, you know, give your settlers their names, uh, that'd be, that'd be nice. Um, it would be also nice to set a, uh, what would you call it? A population control for your settlement you know so you don't have to have just humans you can have ghouls you can have super mutants you can have any sort of other uh, you know highly functional race that uh, Fallout 5 might have to be able to join into your settlements but at the same time you can say no super mutants or you can say no su or no ghouls or you can say no whatever you can just have or you can just say, you know, no ghouls, just mutants. Or no humans or mutants, it's just ghouls. You know, just uh, create that sort of environment for you. Uh, although, if you do have mutants and ghouls, depending upon the locations prejudiced towards such races, 
uh, happiness should take a hit, but it should increase given or following successful defenses because then it shows that, hey, these mutants and ghouls aren't so bad because they are fighting for their home and they are fighting for everyone who's around them. So it would be a hit on your happiness and happiness would grow slower with, without you know, settlement being attacked. But as soon as your settlement is attacked and successfully defended, then happiness would increase, well, perhaps not exponentially, but a little faster than it normally would. I already mentioned the trades things. And um, yes, back to the cap situation. Uh, working up caravans, as we've mentioned, you know, trading resources that you would mine or just in general collect up through your adventures and being able to trade them off with outside factions or settlements or what have you. Uh, you would obviously need to hire guards or work with major factions in order to protect your caravans. Otherwise, your caravans are just going to get attacked and your items will get stolen. And, you know, it could generate a mild quest there where you have to go and find out where your caravan was attacked. And if there are any survivors, they could send you off in the direction that said enemies, you know, took your stuff. So you can go and get it back and then have to set up a whole new caravan or run the rest of the caravan trail yourself. Or, you know, if... Uh, you want to be daring or what have you, you can actually walk the caravan trail and protect it on your own. You know, maybe you're going in that direction anyway. So obviously, uh, caravan guards, you would need to pay because, you know, they're not going to work for free. Uh, this is a thing that's been established all the way back in Fallout 1 where you would be paid as a caravan guard, but, you know, that's because you're working as a caravan guard, so it wouldn't be any different in Fallout 5 when you're actually paying caravan guards yourself. Uh, and factions would take a bit of the supplies that you are either holding or trading away. So let's say that, uh, you know, the Brotherhood of Steel is in Fallout 5 because, well, I think that's a pretty safe bet to assume. Um, and you're on good terms with them. So you decide, like, you know, that uh, they should guard your caravan and you know, for whatever means they are. And in payment they don't take caps they instead take certain bits of your supplies you know some maybe some stim packs maybe some steel maybe some you know components or what have you and that's basically what they take and then on top of that if you just don't want to go out and get any kind of materials for yourself you can hire your settlers to do that you know, you can be all like, hey, Bob, why don't you go get me some copper? And Bob will be all like, right on, boss. But you got to pay me. So, again, that's another thing that you would have to pay for to turn your settlers into scavengers. And they go out and do their thing. Perhaps you can even hire guards for those scavengers or give them upgrades such as giving them pack ramen or, you know, backpacks or weapons, essentially. You know, to defend themselves out in the wasteland while they scavenge for your the supplies that you've requested for them. You know, so they go out, get that, come back, and your supplies are you know, increasing as you're out and doing your own thing. But again, your uh, supplies are running low as a thing. Um, another thing that, uh, you know, getting away from caps for the most part, we'll kind of get back to that again, because this is also end game type stuff. One thing that kind of irked me about the Fallout 4 settlement thing was when your settlement was attacked, let's say by raiders. You know, basically raiders come along and they attack you and they just, you know, act like total dicks. They, you know, wreck up your place a tiny bit and then they just kind of walk away into the wasteland giggling. And, you know, that doesn't really make sense because you think that raiders would do more, especially with the uh, Nuka World adaptation of turning certain settlements into vassal settlements to supply these raider gangs and i think you know where i'm going with this and that is correct i am assume i am you know throwing out the idea that your settlement could in fact become a vassal settlement for a outside raider gang outside enemy faction uh maybe even super mutants if that's what the could be worked into the system and you're basically stuck that way until you've either worked out a deal with, you know, your, well, your raider overlords or your enemy faction controllers or what have you, or you just basically, you know, unalive them. Make sure that they just don't see the wasteland the way that you see it anymore. <laughs> um, 
there would be, you know, like you would have to supply these gangs with, like, let's just stick with the uh, the raider business because, you know, that that would be the most, you know, obvious form of having your settlement turn in, turned into a vassal settlement. So you would have to pay them with supplies. With you know, your food would take a hit. Your you know, your supplies would take a hit, and your caps would take a hit. You know, and that would just be a constant thing until you know you actually defeat the raiders and or you know maybe you just want to keep working with the raiders and you know it wouldn't just be the fact that the raiders attack you and you just lose that you become a vassal settlement maybe you go to a you know a not really aggressive or you know yeah aggressive raider faction maybe there'll be like a uh a perk or a mission or you know some kind of quest that would turn some raiders into non-hostile enemies you know so that you can actually approach them and you know offer up your services and the services of your settlement and become a vassal settlement in that manner so you know you just go to uh you know, like the blood eagles or whatever and say hey we want to help because you we can see that you're kind of around us and our defenses aren't all too high and you know we just don't want to get our asses kicked you know, or because um, you've become a vassal settlement, another you know perk would be the fact that they actually guard your caravans, but they don't charge you anything because it's you know their money that they're protecting, their investment. You know, so you don't waste monies or minerals or resources or what have you guarding your caravans or even your scavengers or anything of that sort, because you know they'll just they'll just do it for you. Which, you know, kind of uh, placates the whole having to be a vassal settlement. But, you know, like I said, you don't all have to be a vassal settlement for the entire game. You can, you know, break free or just uh, ignore, you know, like uh, they could basically uh, come at you and be all like, hey, what's going on here? And, yeah, you know, and just say, hell's no. Um we're not going to work for you anymore. And it would depend. And, you know, like the rep's reaction would depend upon your total defense stat of your settlement and your a bit of a speech check. So, you know, for instance, if you have all your guys, all your, you know, like your defensive position guys rocking power armor with mini guns and you got like 15 million rockets and they're all pointed at this one rep and you got like steel walls and, you know, nice little barbed fence and, little tack dog with goggles on you know obviously the rep's going to be all like okay well i guess where our business is concluded here have a nice day and just kind of leave but if you've got like a couple of ramshackle shacks and you got like a uh you know a guy with a stick still kind of sharpening it and you know a dog that just doesn't really care about you probably just bit you a bit ago then you know the rep would be all like yeah we'll be back and you know we'll kick your ass or something but uh yeah so that's just basically my idea on how settlements could be in uh, Fallout 5. If you've uh, any ideas on adding to that, go right ahead and let me know in the comments or however you wish to discuss this thing. Uh, this is the first of a hopefully new series that I'll be doing, a Fallout 5 discussion, I suppose, would be the best way of putting it. And, you know... Uh, any ideas that you have, I could discuss further in future videos. Maybe uh, ways of which I could fix up what I've already, you know, proposed as a settlement build system for Fallout 5. And yeah, aside from that, thank you all for tuning in, and I will see you next time. Bye, everybody. <laughs>